All right, sorry about that extended break. And I'm going to remove this. And as I mentioned to you, I literally typed in msdn.microsoft or just msdn.com and it pushed me to docs.microsoft.com. So literally anything that you check for under any Microsoft product will be out here. But they've got really good documentation for C Sharp. All right. And what you're going to find is if you Google either the top one or one of the top ones is going to push you out here anyway. All right, I'll just leave it at that. So we left it here. We have declared all of our variables. And you'll notice, again, that I have initialized strings to the empty string, chars to just a blank space, integers to zero, booleans to false. Now, in some programming languages, in some, they will automatically initialize variables for you. Typically, in this language, this is not one of them. All right, and even if it was, I'd still do it like this anyway. I've been burned enough times as a programmer that, you know, the bottom line is it, it could be the software that's screwed up, but your bosses won't care. All right, it's still your butt that's on the line. So the way we're going to do this, and what, what, I, what I'd like to ask is I'm going to, just to show you something different, I'm going to start with the employee number. But I'm going to ask that you not type it in yet. I just want to explain to you what I'm going to do. All right. So for each one of these, we don't want to use a right line statement. We're going to use a right statement. What's the difference between a right and a right line? Right line push, pushes you off to the next line. Right keeps you to the line you're on. So I'm going to put a right statement in here right now that's going to say, please enter your employee number. And since it's a right, it'll, the, the cursor will stop right there and wait for you to enter an employee number. But it's not going to work. All right. And I'm going to show you why it's not going to work and how we fix it. All right. So I'm going to come in here and say right. And then, you know, you can put a blank space here. You don't have to. It really doesn't matter. But I'm going to say here, please enter employee number with a space. All right, and then my semicolon on the end. Now, this is going to fail. I want it to fail because I want to be able to show you how to fix it. So, typically when you want to read something in, you just would say here, read line. And actually, we need a little more than that because it's the employee number. So, we'd say, hey, employee number equals read line. And you notice I get an error. The reason that I get an error is when you read something in from the terminal, it expects that it's a string. And I've said this is an integer. All right, so it literally, really and truly does not know how to handle that. It doesn't know what to do. There are different ways of fixing this. I'm going to show you the one that I would recommend you use all right it's not a cure-all and i'm going to talk about the problems with doing what i'm about to show you so i'm going to change this to convert uh what is it dot two int 32 it's the one you usually use and i don't even know why but you do and then like this and you'll notice now there's no error because what i have said to the system is take whatever value that I put in there and convert it to a whole number, an integer. The problem with this, the problem with this is if I leave it blank or put in something non-numeric or I enter a decimal place, the program is going to blow up. We will learn how to fix that in a later chapter. All right. So, the, the first ones that are in here, we don't have to worry about these as much. And what I mean is this. Uh, so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to just do a write. And I'm going to say, please enter first name. Okay. And now, since it's already a string, you can already see that from up here. I can just say first name equals read line. And you'll notice as soon as I do that, there's no errors and... This went away. See this? There's no squigglies here anymore. So I've got that one. That's a start. All right. 
I'm not sure how it's going to handle the middle initial if you do have a middle initial, but I'm going to try it anyway. Please enter middle initial. I got a feeling it's not going to like this. I'm going to hit, oops. I'm going to hit enter a few times here. Just so I've got that. So I'm going to say here, middle init equals read line. I think this is going to blow up. And it doesn't like that. So let's see, does it tell me a fix? Cannot implicitly convert type string to type char, which makes sense. All right. I don't know if there's a convert to char or not. Convert dot to char. Well, there is. See, I'm learning too. And you'll notice, whoops, that my errors went away. That said, that said, okay, if I put in more than one character, it's going to blow up. Does everybody get that? All right, now, because I'm a little lazy this morning, I'm just going to copy this one, and I'm going to put it in here and say, please enter last name. And we'll put this to last name. I'll tell you what, I'll give you a couple minutes. Please put that in so that you catch up. And what you should notice when you get to that point, if you look on the screen here, now, first name, middle init, last name. All right, and now I can actually use the employee number so I can bring that back up. I think I still have it. Oh, a lot of space I put in there. All right, so you can put in all of that. All right, and I'll give you five minutes or so so that you can catch up with that. Yeah, for those of you who are, are a little typing deficient, that program is called Type Racer. You can go to play.typeracer.com, I believe. All right. You know who you are. I had uh, two things. What, one of those, these, I think you've already heard, the, the people who were here last semester. But anybody who tells me that they can't learn to type, years ago when I was teaching in Wisconsin, um, in summers, we didn't have to teach. We didn't even have to come in during the summer, even though I normally did. But I got asked a week before class started, they said, would you like to teach a, uh, a class this summer? And I said, I don't know, what is it? And they said, keyboarding. Well, after I stopped laughing, because I had no desire, they said, well, we norm they normally paid 35 bucks an hour during the summer. That was their rate. They said, we'll give you 70. That made it sound a little better, all right? So I agreed to do it. Long story short, one of my students who needed one credit to graduate, all right, Dave Taylor, great guy. His uncle actually owned the Minnesota Timberwolves. But um, he came in the first day of class, and I thought it was a joke because that's you'd have to know him. He was a real smart owl kid, but a really bright kid. All right, he had a cast on his arm. And I said, what's going on? He said, I was playing with my son. He did have a, a single dad. He says, playing with my son yesterday, and I tripped on one of his toys and broke my arm. It was his right arm, and he's right-handed. He got up to 44 words a minute just using his left hand. So when people tell me they can't learn to type, I say that's baloney. Now, if you're, if you're arthritic or if you've got a problem with your hands, then I guess I could understand that. All right? So, I mean, like I said, I, I know a guy that I worked with. I was a programmer for AT&T Bell Laboratories back in the 80s. 
before they 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 broke up. And I had a friend, Jim Janik, and Jim typed with two fingers, could type 80 words a minute with two fingers. I was amazed watching the guy just go like this, but he could do it. All right, so do it whatever way works for you. Does everybody have this? All right, so what's left? Well, when we look up here, well, we've got the is union, the hours worked, the hourly rate, and then finally our gross pay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this one right here. I'm gonna copy it three times, four times. Yeah, let's, yeah, four times. And I've got the employee number. Now I'm gonna ask here for the union status. Oops union status and i think we call that is union you're going to notice immediately i get an error and this should make sense to you now because that's a boolean variable and i'm trying to put it into an integer to a number so but there is a convert to boolean all right so that'll work and then we, we need our hours worked And that'll be a convert to double because it was a double variable. And this is hours worked. And then finally, hourly rate. And again, that'll be a two double. Now, if you look up on the screen for just a second here, what should, the only thing that should still have the squigglies or gray or anything is gross pay because we haven't done that one yet. Everything else now is totally fine. All right, so there's the employee number and you probably already guessed, but gross pay is just gonna be gross pay equals hours worked and the order in which you put these two doesn't matter, times hourly rate. All right, we're gonna print this stuff out in a minute, but then we're done with our second program. Get out of there. Again, I'll give you about five minutes or so to catch up on this. And you know what? Even if we don't get to chapters two and three today, it's okay. I'm more concerned with you understanding right now what we're doing. All right. I've taken you a little bit out of the kiddie pool. Okay. And I put you in the regular pool, even though we're still in the shallow end. Right, good. So right now, if we were to save this program and run it, it would ask us for all our variables. If we put stuff in, it would be fine, but then we get no output because we haven't asked for any yet. All right. Now, there's we could do it the exact same way we just did it. We could do a right line for each line, and it's totally fine to do that. There is absolutely no problem at all with doing that. But... I think at least there's a little better way of doing it. So what we're gonna do, have you all caught up? Is everybody caught up? All right, is I'm gonna go back up here where I've got my variables and I'm gonna add one more variable right there. Doesn't matter where you do this. Some people, I mean, are, are even more anal than I am. They want all their strings together and all their ends together. If you wanna do that, do that. All right, it doesn't really matter one way or the other, but I'm gonna create one more string and I'm just gonna call it output str for output string and i'm going to set it equal to the empty string and i'm going to build that output string up in just a minute okay again you don't have to do it like this we could have a right line for each one of these we could even do a right line and put everything together and it would be real long but we could do that we're going to build it as a string called an output str and then we're going to just do a right line and what we'll put in the parentheses is output str all right, everybody caught back up? All right, so I'm gonna build this string now down here. So again, if I wanted to, I mean, some people I think go a little nuts with the comments. We could put a comment here that said input first name, but that's pretty obvious, I think, when you look at it. All right, some people, you know, these are not terrible names. These are not fantastic names. All right, but I think that, you know, this is my litmus test. 
you know, could somebody who does not understand computers or programming look at your code and basically figure out, be able to figure out what's happening? I use my wife. Because she can use her iPad and get on Pinterest, she thinks she's a computer person. Oh, that's right. She can do she can do Facebook too. All right. I won't tell you what I think that makes you. So all right. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to start building it. So I'm going to say str equals, not not string, I'm sorry, it's output str. Output str equals, and I'm going to put here first name, if I can spell, first name plus first name. All right. That's what I got so far. I'm going to keep building on this. So I'll give you a second to put that in. Okay. Now, don't put in what I'm about to show you because we have to make one little change to it. I'm asking you this question. Anybody, take a guess if you want. What do you think if we did this, if we did this right here, all right, and I put it in like this, what do you think output STR would hold? Anybody want to take a guess? No. We would overwrite first name with last name. So how do we fix that? Real simple. We had one character right here. We put a plus equals there. That means append this onto this. The problem is it's going to run like, it, when it prints out, it's going to be like this. It's going to be real huge. It's going to just keep going on the same line. We don't want that. So at the beginning of, of the line, we can do it at each line, a backslash n. Do not use a forward slash. It's the backslash that's right up above your enter key on your keyboard. All right. So that'll say I want each of these to appear on a new line. Does that make sense? Some books will, when they're telling you what a new line is, they'll say it's a combination of a line feed and you know, a carriage return, line feed type of thing. Sometimes you'll even see it put in there as CRLF in some languages. Here we use backslash N, which is much nicer. So I'm just going to keep adding here. Now, I guess I didn't do it at first. So really what I should have put in there first is the middle initial. So output, come on, output STR, I'm going to say here plus equals. And I'm just going to keep adding here, middle Initial plus middle init. Now I've got the last name. I just got to check because I want to make sure. So employee number is union. All right. Oops, I can spell. I'll just call this union status instead of his union. That might be confusing to somebody reading it. All right, so that's five. What's left? Hours worked, hourly rate, and gross pay. Okay. And I'll give you a second. We're going to make a couple more changes, and then we're done with this program. All right. So what I can do right now is I can say right line, output str. All right. And I've got to put a read line afterwards. Otherwise, it will write it, but it'll disappear from the screen. OK. I'll give you a second to do that. And we are just about done with our second program.
As always, if anyone has any questions or if something does not work, all right, when we get done with this, please raise your hand. Typically, it's something really simple. Now, just so you know, these fields that are right here, or this, these lines, those are not strings. You already know that, all right? Typically, typically, this will print out just fine the way it is, all right? However, if you want to be sure it prints out, it still retains its value, but it prints out as a string when you've got no pro, you know, you have no problems, then you can come over here. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. All right, and you can come in here and you can say dot to string, just like that. And I can do it on all these, dot to string, dot to, oops, string. It, this stuff is case, case sensitive, dot to string, and dot, we're going to fix this one a little bit in just a second, dot to string. All right. Again, it will typically work just fine if you don't do this. But it's really considered that that's a better practice. The, the, the um, single character, we don't have to really convert to a string. You can do that one, too, if you want to. But there really, I don't see a, a big reason for doing that. Now, there's only one thing that I'd like to do yet. Okay. And... Boy, it's been a while, so I want to make sure that I'm going, to, I'm going to do it right. So I may screw it up, but I'm hoping I'm not. Now, when we run this, let's say that we put in for hours work 40, and for hourly rate, let's say that we put in 25. Okay, it should do the math, and it should give us 1,000. What I'd like is I'd like it to put a dollar sign, 1, 000.00. I'd like that. I could manually put the, the, the dollar sign in here. All right. But now, and this is where I said I, I, I'm trying to remember. Let's see. I don't know if it's just this. So the, it's not complaining. That should tell it, if I didn't screw it up, to put it in in currency format. So it should put the dollar sign in, and it should put in any commas it needs and put it to two decimal places. That's kind of nice. All right, just putting it in like that. Now, uh, I'm asking this question. Has everybody had the chance to catch up? No? Then, then take, take a couple minutes and please catch up. You're really far behind, then I'll move it up a way. So how about there? Is that, does that help? All right. For the rest of you then, do a save. So either click the double disk icon that's at the top or do a file save. Or I think Control S will work also. Whatever. Whatever you're interested in, you know, the way you want to do it. And then click that green, click that green arrow button, the one that's right by the start, and you should be able to run the program. Now, if you get an error, all right, and you can't figure out what the error is, let me know, and I'll try to work with you. All right. And I'll tell you what, just I'll, I'll put it back on the screen. Just give me a second, because I want to make sure what I put up here, I didn't give you any put any errors in here. So we do this. Well, it's oh, okay, that's good. It's going to run your last program. We'll fix that in a minute. Okay. If you're like, hey, that ran my last program, that's wrong. Look on the screen, please. Then come over to here. You've now got payroll one and payroll two, correct? Right mouse click on payroll two and choose set as startup project because by default it always runs the first one that it finds in there all right make sure you choose payroll too because otherwise you're just going to keep running the one you just did all right 
So if I do set up startup project and I run it again, now it came up and it said, please enter first name. All right. So I'm just going to leave that. I'm going to just kill my run so you got a chance to catch up. I appreciate you telling me. I'd rather do that and have people catch up. All right. When we finish with this in just a couple minutes, and hopefully we'll be done by no later than 10, I'm not going to do a lot more explaining on this program because it's basically the same as we did the last program, except we're now inputting values. And you might say, yeah, but the problem is, what if I want to run this a bunch of times? Eventually, we'll go through a chapter on loops. And when we go through the chapter on looping, you'll be able to run this program as many times as you want. Make sense to everybody? All right. All right. by yourself you cut it down to just three that's good now this is this is two pit 32 not to go because that's that variable is integer it's right there big i little n t and the number 32. that's good nope. yeah, i'm not sure okay go back up to oh wait a minute you've got f number on both of these that's just already good and in fact, that other one was right, that was a double. That one was a double, that should have been always work. See that? You convert that back to a double, make that always work, you make that always right, and that should just about get rid of every error you've got. So right there, that should be always right. Now see, there's, have, have you guys noticed too, there is what's called IntelliSense in here, that when you start typing, it'll try to give you a hint. That happens if you hit tab, it'll accept that hint. It's also possible to go in through your options and turn that IntelliSense off. Some people find it to be a, a royal pain. Anybody else having problems? Any problems? Is what we're doing make, does it make sense to people? Any questions on anything? The syntax, the format? Like I said, we're starting this purposely very slow. All right? And it's funny because even with the, uh, the class in the afternoon, I thought yesterday, I thought, well, I wrote a program and we, I, I did five of them. I thought, we'll probably get all five of these done. We got to the fourth one, 
and it was already after three. And I'm like, okay, we're not going to get all five done. But I, I told them, I said, I'm going slow on purpose. Is that okay? They're like, yeah, it's fine. So no questions. All right. Then it's GUI time. So let's do a file, save all. If you haven't, you can close this file. You know, it, it's just in here in this tab right here. You can just click on that tab. All right. And we can click on this arrow here. So we've got two of these now, right? We're going to make a third project right now. So right mouse click again on your solution, please. Choose add, choose new project. This time it's going to be different. All right, I'm gonna come in here in my box and I'm gonna type in Windows Form. This is a GUI. Everything we've done so far has been a console app. We're going to do a GUI. As we get through, start going into this, probably all seven or eight of yours are going to look markedly different. That's totally fine. I'm going to show you how you can go in and set things like background color, font, etc. Have some fun with it because that's how you learn. So with Windows Form, you want the Windows Forms app dot network here and you want the one that's got C sharp in it. So again, with that highlight, I'm going to click on it, single click on it to highlight it. And I'm going to choose next. Notice again, it knows where to put it. And I'm just going to call this one, uh, you know, it's kind of boring. But this one will be payroll 03. They could be totally different names, just so you know. All right, they could be totally different. It, you know, I mean, you could call one, you know, elephant, one hot dog. It doesn't matter. But since these are all payrolls, that's why I'm doing it this way. So I made a payroll 03 and I'm going to click create. You're immediately going to notice it's going to look a heck of a lot different. All right. That's your form area right there. That's where we're going to draw the program. Right there. We went over this a little bit yesterday. This area in here, this is our solution explorer. This area in here is our properties window. What you're probably going to want to do, probably, is if you haven't done so already is to go over here on the side and where it says toolbox right there you should see a tab that says the word toolbox way to the left if you don't see that so gabriel says well i don't see that then just click view and go down right towards the bottom and you'll see where is it i know it's not toolbar it's toolbox right there okay so you can do that either way but we want to go and click the toolbox and that'll bring it up. And you're like, well, now it's blocking stuff. I know that. So we're going to click this little stick pin. Not if you click the X, it, it closes it. But I'm going to click the stick pin that's right next to the X up there. All right. And notice what happened. All right. It's what? You got it? Okay. Now, these are the different kinds of tools that you can select, just so you know. If you look over here, these are the tools you can select. The one I recommend you have open probably 90% of the time is the first one that says All Windows Forms. And notice, it gives you a boatload of stuff. All right? Now, kind of nice to have this up here. I'm going to actually make this bigger. You don't have to make yours bigger. I'm making it bigger because what I'm going to do is right on the board, I'm going to draw what this thing is going to look like. You with me? All right. So we're going to put up here what's called a label, and it'll say payroll application. You don't like that? Call it whatever you want. All right. Then over here, we're going to have what's called a label, and this over here will be a label, and it'll say first name. Okay, and then we're going to have over here what's called a text box, and that's where we'll put the first name. Then we'll have another label we'll put right here that will say last name, and we'll put a text box right there. I'm building the interface literally right in front of you. We'll have another one here that will say emp number, 
and we'll put that here. We'll have another one here. This will say, we'll just say union status. I think it's a little easier for people to understand that. And we'll put that here. And then finally, we'll have one down here that says uh, hours, hours worked. I'm trying to line these up a little bit. I'm not, you know, I, I did not have a career in art. So here's hours worked. And we'll put that here. We'll have another one that will say hourly rate. And we'll put that here. Then finally on the bottom, we'll have three buttons. One here that will say calculate. One here that will say clear. And one here that will say exit. I got to find that exit code. So let's just take a minute and talk about everything that's up there. All right. Everything you see up here with writing on it, those are what are referred to as labels. They're headings. Does that make sense? All right. The weird thing is you've got to, you've got to set a couple things when you're doing labels. And one of the things you have to set is counterintuitive to what you think it would be. So it's a value that you would think you would set to true, but you have to set it to false. I think that's what it is. We'll see it in a minute. These things here, 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 those things that are in there, and I might even be missing something if I, oh, I'm not going to put the middle initial in there, okay? It, it looks kind of symmetrical, so it doesn't look too bad. The, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one, those are referred to as text boxes. You'll be able to manually go and put information in them. And now that I think about it, I am missing something. How about the gross pay? So down here, I don't know where, we'll just put it down here someplace. We'll say gross pay, and we'll put that in here, and then we'll have our buttons. All right, so calculate, clear, and exit. All right. Now, this is going to be a special text box. It's going to be set to read only. Because when we put 40 here, so if I fill this in, Jeff, Scott, one, two, three, four, five, say true, 40, 25, we want it to automatically come up and look like this. All right, and we don't want that to be changeable. So we'll make that read only. When we click calculate, we're going to have basically everything filled in except this. That's what that's going to do. When we click clear, it's going to clear whatever we put in here and here and here, 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 here. And if we had anything in there, right there. Finally, when we click exit, all right, we're going to bring up what's called a message box that says, are you sure you want to quit the program or exit the program? And there'll be a yes or no, or no, I, I think that, yeah, we'll do it with a yes or no. If you click yes, boom, the program's done. All right. And if you click no, you'll stay there. Does all that make sense? All right. Now, probably stupid to do this, but I'm just going to grab my phone, and I'm going to take a picture of this unbelievably beautiful interface right here. So as we make it, it kind of looks, or hopefully at least, it kind of looks the way that it's supposed to look. All right, and we'll bring it up so I have it up on the phone. <clears throat> Why? Because I'm about to erase it. All right. It's not one of those neat looking whiteboards where you can do this stuff. And like I said, if it turns out that it takes us the rest of the period but every single person in here has got their GUI app working. I'm okay with that. We just start pushing stuff over a little bit. And then Monday we go over chapter uh, chapter two and chapter three. Okay, that's not a problem. But let's at least build the interface and we'll almost be ready probably for another breakdown. Okay, now a couple things as we get started. First of all, Microsoft has changed over the years and I'm going to tell you the way I do this. I'm going to tell you the way I used to do this. 
I believe that every single thing that we put here on our on our screen should have a name. Did you hear me? And, and you know, you can say, well, we did that before. No, we didn't. We had names for our variables, but we didn't have any GUI components. So, for instance, even if I come in here, and, and don't, don't worry about this, I'll show you this in a minute. But if I come in here and put a label in here, it looks real little, but it'll be big in a minute. Okay? So if I come in here and I put a label in there, I shouldn't call this label one, because that's really terrible. That's a terrible name. So this will be my main heading. Now, Microsoft used to recommend that labels, you would start with a prefix LBL for label, BTN for button, TXT for text box, etc. Then they changed. And they changed it so like, instead of LBL heading, you would write the word label followed by heading. All I'm going to say to you is you can do it either way. Start to develop your own coding style but stick to it. Even, you know, you guys have heard me say this before, but even a bad coding style is better than none at all. You don't want it to where you're, you're, you're sometimes I, I call my labels LBL something, sometimes I call them label something, sometimes I don't even change the name. You don't want to do that. All right, it just makes it hard for other people to understand then what you're trying to do. Now, what you see on the screen right here, I'm going to remove this label. But what you see on the screen right here is what's called a form. All right. And when you look over here, I'm going to go and just, I'm going to drag this up a little bit. Okay. These are all the different things that I can change for the form. Everybody see this? Look at this. If you told me there were 20, 30, I believe you. And there's actually more than that. Some of these are hidden. All right. These are all things that you can change. You, you know, immediately in design mode. So you use the properties window to change these things in design mode. Almost in virtually everything that you do in design mode, you can do with code also. And there's things you can do in code that are either impossible or very hard to do in design mode. All right. So the first thing that I want to do is I don't like the name of this because it's called form one. I don't like that name. All right. So I start to look through here and somewhere in here, it's got to say form one. I know it does someplace. Well, if I go down to design, so that's about a third, half the way down, it says form one. I'm going to change that. And I'm going to put the word form, but I'm going to call it form payroll. So I'm going to have a big F-O-R-M, big P, little A-Y-R-O-L-L. -L. Once you do that and you hit enter, please look up on the screen here. It's going to change here. It's not going to change anywhere else. Just there. So I put in there form payroll. Notice it says form one now. Now it changed to form payroll. Everybody see that? This up here is not the name. This thing that you see right there, that is not the name. That is the text that's associated with form. We're going to change that next. All right. So I now have renamed one component, the only one I have. Now I'm going to go down a little further, and I'm going to find, if I keep going down someplace down here, it still says Form 1 somewhere. There it is. I guess it's up. Text under Appearance. And I'm just going to change this to, you know, put whatever you want in there. But I'm going to put in my first C sharp. Graphical user interface, parenthesis, GUI, parenthesis, program, exclamation point. And if you see, I know it's hard to see, but it now changed up here to my first C-sharp graphical user interface GUI program. You can put anything you want to put in there. But it, to me, it looks very unprofessional to not rename your controls and to have stuff up there that just got a, a stock name like Form 1. I wouldn't do that. All right. Now, the next thing I want to do, I don't like that color. 
All right. That's the default color for a form. You know, why well, I like it, then don't change yours. Totally fine. But I'm going to click right here, just click on it, and I'm going to look and up by appearance, so right up a little bit up from where I just changed the text, there's a thing that says back color. Can you see that? I'm going to click on that, and once I do, it brings up those little down arrow, and I'm going to click the down arrow. This is one of the things to me that Microsoft, pardon my French, but sucks at. All right? You could pick anyone you wanted to out of system. You could pick anyone you want to out of web. But I'm going to recommend that when you do this and you're choosing colors, to always choose custom because that's what it gives you. All right? If you don't like that, you can go in. If you know anything about RGB for red, green, blue, et cetera, you can go in and set your own colors programmatically. All right, but this one, I'm just going to grab, I don't know, this turquoise, light turquoise doesn't look bad. So I'm going to grab that, and you should immediately be able to see how it changed. Now, again, if you're cool with it being being gray, then keep it gray. All right, I just don't like that color. But if you like it, or if you're cool with it, that's not a problem. All right, so what have we done so far? We've gone in, we've created the GUI app, we changed the name of our form, we changed the text associated with our form. We changed the color associated with our form. But right now, there's nothing on the form. All right. So let's start doing that. So I'm going to go over on the side here where I've got my tools. And please watch because I want to show you quickly three different ways that you can go and add tools. All right. The first way is I can just come up to label here, which is what we're going to add. I could double click it. Boom. It puts it then automatically in the upper left hand corner. Totally fine to do that. Now I'm going to remove this. And I'm going to just grab a label. I'm going to hold down on the left mouse button and drag it. That gives me a little more control because I can put it where I want. Now, if I want, if I already had a label and I wanted to make a copy, control C to copy, control V to paste, and it'll make a copy. So if you would please just put a label, put a first label up there on your form. You got it. put it somewhere around here. It doesn't have to be right there. You'll be able to move it around. Okay. The one thing right now is it's stuck. It's stuck as far as its size goes. All right. And I don't know why Microsoft did it like this, but they did. Where is it? Uh, now I got to remember what it's called. This is, this is why I should have done this last night. All right. But I didn't. So let's see. Is it auto ellipsis? I don't remember. No. I think it's, let's see, is it auto size? Yes. Okay. So go down near the bottom under layout and find auto size, which should be set to true which to me says you could automatically size it. But when it's true, you can't auto size it. So what do you do? You can do two different things here. If you look up on the screen, you can either where it says this, you can double click on the word true and it changes to false. So just double click on it. Or you can click the down arrow. Once you click once on it, it gives you a down arrow here. And you can click there and choose false. But either way, make that false. Now, notice it's got the little things here so I can change the size of it. All right. So I now have got that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to change the name of it. Right now, over here by the, the text, I'm not going to change for a second. That's what I'll do next. But I got to come in here and find under design, I've got to find. Now, Microsoft changed this. You may or may not care. But in the version, the old version of Visual Studio that I had, name was always at the top. They've now moved it down. I don't know why they did that. I liked it up at the top because I knew where I could change the name all the time. But I'm going to change the name of this from label one to label, I'm just going to call it label main heading. Right there. All right. Now, I want to show you something. I hit enter, and now you'll be able to tell I changed the name. See this? Once we start to fill this up and you've got 10, 12 controls on there, you're all smart enough. Look on the screen here. 
you can you know you can click here you can click around okay but you can also click this down arrow and it'll show you all of your controls and it's another way you can move around all right so i've got this what do i want to change well i want to change a couple things first thing i'm going to change is that's way too small okay so i'm going to come down here and when i do this i'm going to, when i keep looking notice that under appearance there's a font thing there see that so i'm going to go down and under font where it says now says microsoft sans serif 8.25 points i'm going to single click on this look on the screen single click and it brings up this little ellipsis here and i'm going to click on the ellipsis you may have seen this before if you've worked in word or if you've worked in excel or something else but now i can change i like using an Arial font you don't have to but i'm going to go back up to the top and i'm going to grab Arial. i'm going to make it bold because it's the my main label and i'll change the size to about 16. you can immediately tell how it's changed that might not even be big enough maybe i want to double that size so i'll make it uh, let's make it 28. That might not even be big enough, but it's better. Okay, so I'm gonna with that in there. Now I'm gonna go down a little ways where it says text, and I'm just gonna type in payroll application and hit enter. And the only thing I still don't like about it is it's not centered in the box that it's in. You all see that? So I'm gonna go down a little further, and where is it? Text a lot, almost right below what I just put in. Under text align, it says top left. I don't like how Microsoft does this either, but if you click there, notice what you get. You get boxes. And what I want is I want it to be centered in the center. So I'm gonna click the center box and there it is. Now, if you don't like the fact that the background color is the same color as the actual form, I could then come up here and find back color for my label. And if I wanted, for example, to make it orange, there it is. This is your program. I want you to experiment and not be afraid to try different things. All right, if you're cool with it the way it was, then leave it the way it was. All right, so we've now got the top done. All right, I'm gonna build most of the rest of the interface and then we'll take another break. All right, so I'm gonna come in here and I'm immediately going to grab one more label I'm gonna put it right there, right underneath. I'm gonna change the name right away from label one to label first name. Okay, you can see it immediately changed on there. I'm going to again, come down to the, that size property that we set before, which of course I forgot what it was. Uh, what the heck was it? Auto size, I'm gonna set that again to false. All right, and make this a little bigger. I'm gonna change the text that's in there. All right, so I didn't change the name before. That's, I screwed up. So I want that to be label first name and the actual text that's in there, I'm gonna have it just say first name. I think we put a colon in there before. Still not very big. So I'm again going to go to font which is up a little ways and I'll change that and I'll again make it because I like Arial. I like to use the same font all over bold and I'll make it 16. That's not bad. See that? Now, the reason I'm showing it to you like this is I'm now going to, for lack of better words, I'm now going to cheat. What do I mean? Well, I'm going to grab this label. I'm going to do a control C and a control V. This is going to be my last name in just a minute. This is going to be whatever we had in there, the union status and the other one that was in there. So there's that. This will be my hours worked. Oops, well, I didn't mean to do that. So I screwed up, but I'll fix that in a bit. So this will be my hours worked. This will be my hourly rate. Now, do you notice, please look up on the screen here. Do you notice you get these, they're, they're called guidelines. So if I want to, I can click and you'll notice now it says that the middle of this one is equal to the middle of the one to the right of it. And when I move over far enough, it says these are now synced up. 
Now, what if I didn't do this? What if all these labels were really, 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 really little? All right, then I can hold down on the left mouse button and draw an invisible box around all of them. That's called lassoing them. What you'll notice when you do that is now the, the number of things I can change over here is smaller because it's going to affect all six of these. So I won't have things in there like name because I don't want, I can't share the same name with all six or, you know, uh, probably not even text. The text does look like it's in there, but I don't want to change that like that anyway. But what I can do is with all six of these chosen, I can go to back color and I can choose that light orange. And boom, I changed all six of them at one time. It's not that big a thing, but I'm just showing you how you can do this stuff. All right. So now with that, I'm going to come in. I'm going to add a different control. And that is I'm going to go down to the T's and I'm going to find text box. All right. That one you can magically make wider. Okay. But until we start putting something in it, there's a way to make it longer too, but we'll fix that. In fact, the way that you do that, the way that you make it so you can make it you know, wider like that, not wider, I guess higher, is you go down to the font. And I'm going to change the font on that as well to Arial, bold, and I'm going to make it 16. And you notice the size change. <clears throat> All right. Now I'm going to copy this one. And I'm going to... Ooh. Talk on it. You don't want to do that. I'll explain why in, in just a bit. Okay. Uh, where are we? Where is, there we go. There we are. All right. So I'm going to put this in here. You can line these up any way you want them lined up. You know, to me, when you start doing these projects, you're going to be putting these things into your portfolio. So you should do the best you can to make them look as professional as possible. Again, that's my opinion. And part of the grade for your portfolio will be how professional the portfolio looks. Now, I still got a lot of name changes to go. I think you'd all agree with that. All right. So I want to do two more things here. Excuse me. Two more things here. <clears throat> this is going to end up, whoopsie, this is going to end up, come on, get out of there. This is going to end up being my gross pay right there. And I'm going to, then I'm going to go back up to buttons here and I'm going to add three buttons. Those I can automatically resize. Okay, so there'll be my first one. There will be my second one. I just did a copy. There will be my third one. Now, it's not perfect, but that's pretty much, pretty much the GUI that I drew for you on the board. And even though it's the first time we've done this, it still only took 10 or 15 minutes. So it is 1020. I'm going to give you a break till 1030. I'm going to go in and during that time, you don't have to do this. You can do it later, whenever, but I'm going to go in and I'm going to change the name of all these labels and the text for all the labels, and I'm going to change the name for the text boxes and the name for the buttons. All right. And then we'll come back and we'll program in that stuff. There's not really a lot of code we have to write in here, which is kind of a good thing. All right. And I'll show you a few more other things. And like I said, by that time, we'll, we'll see where we are time-wise. Okay. A lot of the material that's in chapters two and three, just so you're aware of this, we're going to go over, <clears throat> we'll go over quickly on Monday because I'm showing it to you rather than going over it in the book. I think it makes more sense to do it like this. It stays with you when we do it like this. All right. So come back at 1030, please.